Hello, wonderful students. I welcome you to today's class. Our topic for today is words associated with poetry. We are looking at the words associated with poetry. What are the nursing objectives of this lesson? What are the things expected of you to know? By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to first list some words, at least 15 words associated with poetry. Also, you should be able to discuss robustly 10 of the words mentioned. What are these words associated with poetry? What are these words? The words associated with poetry include allusion. Allusion is a reference that a poet makes to a person or a place or to a thing or even an event that has happened in the past with the supposition that the readers already have the knowledge. So when a poet makes an allusion, it makes reference to a past event. It could be a biblical event with the belief that the readers already know what he or she is trying to talk about. For instance, when you say 30 pieces of silver, this is an allusion to mean betrayer. That is a biblical allusion. We also have anaphora. It is a repetition of same word or phrase at the beginning of each line. Anaphora is a repetition of same word or phrase at the beginning of each line. We also have anapest. This is a metrical foot that is containing two unstressed syllables, followed by a stressed syllable. We have other words associated with poetry. There are so many. We can't exhaust them. So we'll continue to look at some of them. We have words like sesura. What is sesura? Sesura is a deliberate break or pause within a line of poetry. When you see a punctuation within a line of poetry, that is sesura. For instance, it could be apostrophe, it could be a comma. When you see punctuation, like hyphen, they are all indications of the use of sesura. Again, we have words like blank verse, that is a phrase, blank verse. Blank verse is any poem that is written without an end rhyme. When there is no end rhyme, it is a blank verse. We also have couplet. Couplet is a poem of two lines. Poem of two lines. There are other words also that are associated with poetry. Of course, we said we cannot exhaust those words. They are numerous. We have words like datil. Datil. What is datil? It's a food that consists of one stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. A syllable is stressed and the next two ones are unstressed. That is that too. We have enjambment. Enjambment means run on line. When an idea in a poem 
is not exhausted in a nine and then it continues in the following nine that is enjambment we also have epigraph is a short quotation of verse that comes just immediately after the title of a poem or it could be a book or chapter when you have a title and then there is a short quotation just immediately after that title that is called epigraph we also have foot foot is the basic measurement in poetry it consists of two or three syllables foot is the basic unit of measurement we have still have other words associated with poetry there are so many we have word like am i am what does it mean let's look at am am consists of unstressable followed by a stress syllable in a sentence when you check a sentence the first syllable there is unstressed the next one is stressed then am is used we have ambic pentameter ambic pentameter consists of five arms ambic pentameter consists of five arms which means there are usually six that is five arm that is 10 syllables in ambic pentameter five arms which means the first is usually unstressed followed by a stressed syllable we also have meter meter is usually the rhythmic measurement of a nine it talks about the pattern of beats sometimes in poetry meter is used interchangeably with foot or if you like you can call it feet let's look at the number of feet in a nine when we have one foot in a nine what is it called when we have two feet what is it called when we have three feet what is it called let's look at number of feet in a nine when we have one foot in a nine it is called monometer when we have two it is called diameter when we have three it is called trimeter four it is called tetrameter when we have five it is called pentameter when we have six it is called hexameter if it is seven it is called heptameter and if it is eight it is called optameter let's continue with words associated with poetry there are so many we have said that on several occasions we have words like rhyme scheme what does rhyme scheme mean what is a rhyme scheme it talks about the pattern of rhymes at the end of each line whether the end rhymes is a a b b or whether it is a b a b as the case may be we also have what is called sonnet sonnet is a poem of 14 lines most of them are not sonnet has 4442 the stanza are usually 4442 and the end rhymes are usually a b a b b c b c D F D F and the last one is always G G. We have stanza. Of course, you are aware that poems are usually broken down into stanzas. They are usually written in stanzas. Let's look at stanzas. What do we call a stanza of one line? A stanza of two lines? Stanza of three lines? What do we call them? 
A stanza of one line is usually called a monometer. A stanza of two lines, we call that a couplet. A stanza of three lines, we call that a triplet or you call it a tasset. Four lines, we call that a quatrain. Five lines, we call that a quintain or we call it a quintet. Six, we call it a sextet. Seven, septet. Eight, octave. Nine, we call that what? We call it Spencerian or we call that Nonet. Ten, we call that Dizen or Descartish. So let's look at more words associated with poetry. Let's see more words, words like Troki. What does Troki mean? What does it mean when we talk of Troki in poetry? It means metrical foot that consists of a stress syllable followed by an unstressed syllable. We also have mood. Mood usually talk about the state of mind of a poet. You can most times mood are used interchangeably with tone of a poem. We have poetic license. Poetic license talk about the liberty, the freedom that a poet has to use the language of his choice. We also have what is called theme. Theme tells us the central message or the main message of a poem. Also, we have refrain. Refrain is all about repetition of lines at regular interval in a poem. Repetition of lines at regular interval in a poem. Having known so many words associated with poetry, I will urge you not to just fold your arms and relax yourselves. Go through these words over and over again until you are able to gain mastery of these words. When you are able to gain mastery of these words, then you should be able to appreciate poems as good as possible. In our next class, we will be discussing the various figures of speech and sound. Until then, do have a wonderful time ahead. Goodbye for now. Thank you very much. <laughs>